you ever taken something like a spoon and launched something out of it? Do you know what that's called? Well, that's called a catapult, and today I'm going to show you how to make it using Kiva planks. Catapults were used thousands of years ago in battles and wars, and these days catapults are used for a variety of purposes, anywhere from toys to launching airplanes into the sky from an aircraft carrier that has a short runway space. Today, you're gonna need at least three Kiva planks, a rubber band, and a coin or something of a similar size to use as your projectile. We can't wait to get started, so go ahead and grab those and let's go. A catapult is an example of a lever, and I'm going to show you how that works with these Kiva planks. You're going to take two Kiva planks and put them together, and then take a rubber band and wrap the end of those planks together a couple of times, depending on whether your rubber band is thinner or thicker, you might need to wrap it a couple more times, just um, experiment and test it out. Now that you have those together, like a mouth, you're going to take a plank and slide it into the mouth. And we're gonna, I'm gonna test it out by pushing it just until, uh, you know, whenever you feel like it's a good distance. So with this lever, this piece right here is called the fulcrum, and that's the part that this piece is being interact is interacting with. So it's going to be moving as this is being pressed down. Well, that's going to be staying still while this lever is being pressed down. So now I'm going to take my coin, and with my plank pushed down, I'm going to hold this here just for security purposes, and I'm going to just take my finger and let it go. Did you see how that coin fell? It came in an arch mo motion. And Galileo figured out that the motion in which a coin that's being launched or any projectile is being launched is interacting or influenced not by just one motion, but two motions. And if you think about it, when the coin is moving up and back down, there's a force that's working vertically called gravity, and that's anything that's being pulled back down to Earth. So that's how the coin is falling. Then when I'm launching it, it's also moving forward. So anything that's working with motion going horizontally is called inertia. So when you're working with a catapult, it's interacting with both of those motions together. Now, the other thing to think about with your catapult is how much force to add to your catapult as you're launching your projectile. So if I take my coin and I just keep my finger here, oops, and I try launching it, it doesn't go very far. So then I'm going to test it out and push a little bit more. It goes a little bit further. And then if I push it down all the way, it shoots the farthest. So by doing that, we're learning that the more force you add to something like the lever, the farther and the faster your projectile is going to go. That means that the more force you add, the more distance and the more speed your object is going to get. So that's really cool how science is and physics is interacting when you build something like this. So now you're ready to go and uh, experiment, design, and test out your own catapults. If you find that your rubber band needs to be tightened, you can go ahead and do that. You can even try adding more leverage by adding a, more of your, uh, to your fulcrum there and see if that'll make it go even further. And you can also test out where the location of your fulcrum is going to be. So if it's gonna be closer up and see how your catapult works with that, or whether you can even do it further back and see the interaction between those. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And if you have any suggestions for more lesson plans that you want to see, please leave them in the comments and hopefully we can do something like that in the future. Thanks for joining me today and we can't wait to see what you create.